it's time to start carving. So you might as well grab your tools, grab some veggies, grab some fruit, and we're gonna sit and carve. So let's go do it. Hello, uh, Chef Ray here. On today's show, we're gonna be doing some different uh, things today with some different vegetables and fruits. Just wanna let you know uh, some of the tools that we're gonna be using today. We're actually gonna be using some different sizes of uh, U and V cutters. Uh, U cutters are called that way because obviously they're a U cutter. Uh, the V cutters obviously because they're a V uh, cut. Um, we're also gonna be using a tie knife. These knives are very flexible, uh, actually made of aluminum very sharp and I'm actually using a Diva knife, uh, blades very thin. Everything can be done with one knife. These tools just make our job easier. Uh, be very careful uh, when using these because of course both ends are sharp so as you're holding them you want to be very careful that you don't stab yourself. So um, safety first, um, artistry second. So be careful and uh, what do you say? Well, we take these tools of the trade and we make some magic. We're going to be playing with honeydew melon and it's not going to be wedges and slices. So what do you say that uh, we dig in? I actually have a, a very large U-cutter here. Okay, I'm actually going to take my U-cutter and actually go in about a half an inch deep and uh, make a circle here in the top. I've actually cut the bottom off so this sits flat. We're actually on a raised surface. A cake turntable makes my job much easier to turn this. I have two different types of tie knives. One's a wooden handle, very flexible, easy for maneuvering side to side. And I actually have a tie detail knife. These are actually designed for very uh, soft mediums. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to just make a series of half cuts. I'm actually going to cut this into eighths. Um, the actual depth of these cuts probably about the width of my little finger, so approximately about a half an inch deep. Now that I've cut this into eighths, half inch deep, I'm actually going to take my knife and cut sideways, one pie wedge at a time, going right along the line, and I'm just going to take out a series of these little wedges here, one at a time here, right along the, uh, right along the line here. Now the reason that we didn't cut this into 16s or 32s is because, for the obvious reason, it would just be a lot more work. The wow factor for this is going to be just the same whether we cut this into uh, quarters or eighths or 16s or 30 seconds. So again, I'm actually angling my knife down into the melon to take out these pie wedges, not very deep, just enough to get us some relief here. piece there that needs to come out. So now that we've got our uh, little uh, turbine wheel there, I'm actually going to just make a cut straight out and take a piece right across, just like this. Now I'm going to take my knife and actually go underneath the flesh, moving in and out, back and forth, in and out, back and forth. I'm going to take a cut and go straight off of this, straight down, and come back over. And again, do the same thing here. I'm actually going to go in and out and back and forth, in and out, back and forth. We're going to do this to uh, every piece, which means we should have approximately eight of these little serrated blades here. And again, I'm actually cutting up underneath the melon. Common misconception is people are used to cutting straight in and straight across, whereas the melon is round, our knife actually begins to change, change angle when we do this here. So again, we're just going to go all the way around here. Now a piece that we're doing here should take us about eight minutes or thereabouts. We'll see if that holds true. Hopefully the cameraman's arms won't get tired from holding the camera while we do this. So 
Okay, down and over. Now that we've gone all the way around here, we can then start this entire process again by going underneath these. So we will go from one, we will go from one to the next one. And make sure that we get a little bit underneath that. And do the same thing again. We can go over and down, over and down, over and down, and make a piece. We can go from here to here and begin to get these two overlap. Again, that needs to be a little bit underneath so that these pieces will stick out in relief. And we'll just continue to go around from piece to piece here. And again, I'm cutting up underneath the melon. Again, you can see how my knife is actually angling up toward the top of the melon, getting used to carving underneath the skin, carving back up toward the center. It takes a little bit of practice. People are uh, mainly used to uh, carving straight down or cutting things straight down, not used to um, having knives that move, um, changing the angle at which you're uh, used to for the last you know, 20 to 50 years. And what happens if a piece breaks? What do we do? So we put it right back, OK? Put it right back. This piece can come right out of there, and we're good to go. Now, I'm going to go right here. Now, to see what we've done, I'm actually going to take my knife and cut underneath these just so I can see uh, what, in fact, we have here, again, cutting underneath and cutting up. It takes a little, little getting used to, a little practice. But once you do, then you're well on your way. Now, let's take this little guy out here. Again, a piece broke. What are we going to do? So I won't tell. How about you guys? I, they won't tell. Okay. Again, now that we've gone all the way around, and we can see what we have here, then we can start in again. We'll just tidy this up here a little bit. Okay. And we'll start over again. Once again, this is actually a, actually a smile. This is actually a smile cut, just like this. Okay. Anytime that we take out a piece, we actually trace on the inside this time, making a big petal. Okay. Being careful not to cut too far into the middle. As you can see here, I've actually broken into the center. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take that. I'm going to put that piece back in so that we won't have that problem here. And once again, making the big elongated petals. Again, cutting back up toward this piece. Okay. Now we can make these smaller or larger. Depends on A, how big our melon is and how much time we have. Almost done with this one. Almost there. Okay, that should do it here. And again, we want, want to be very careful when pulling pieces out that we don't break the previous pieces. And once again, my knife is angling up back toward the petals to get these pieces to actually come out underneath. Okay, underneath. Okay. Underneath. Now, now that we have this piece here, now we can begin to finish this off in, in any one of a number of ways. We could actually go along the edge and do this whole in and out, back and forth, kind of crepe paper look. And again, in and out, back and forth, in and out, back and forth. Not going down, but going underneath. Makes for a lot less work. OK? 
right? And a lot better control for your knife. Once we get back to where we are here, then we can, again, take our knife and cut back up underneath this. Actually, my knife is angling up toward the sky. If we did this just right here, then this piece should, in fact, come right out just like that in one, one fell swoop. Again, if we wanted to take it even a step further, we could do it again. Now, because light does not bend, you don't need to go around the entire melon all the way to the back because you can't see the back. So this should be just about far enough for us. I'm just going to kind of tidy this up. And I'm actually taking my knife and I'm actually cutting back up towards the petals. And if we did this just right, I hope. And again, on this particular melon, this piece right here is broken. So that piece should not be in the up position. That piece should be in the down position. So what I'm going to do, actually take my Deba knife. I'm actually going to cut this at an angle. I'm actually going to set it up just like that. And there you have it, OK? Um, now that you've seen what uh, tools uh, we're going to be using today, uh, just a reminder, if you need tools, books, DVDs, you need to learn, you can go to the website, www.chefgarnish.com, located in Torrance, and uh, get your carving fix, if you will, uh, so that you can learn more, get the proper tools, and begin to become the true culinary artist that is inside each and every one of us. So until then, carve on.